heading west to Los Angeles, a city that plans to generate 20% of its power from renewable sources by the year 2010, and 35% by 2020. Here in Studio City, California, this is a house that's getting a total makeover. The owners, Ron and Tammy, call themselves eco-maniacs. So, uh, this one I gotta see. So we redid the entire roof, but we recycled the tiles and used the same tiles. Ron and Tammy try to recycle whenever they can. Their kitchen counters will be made of a concrete that uses fly ash as a strengthener. Fly ash is waste scrubbed from the stacks of coal-burning power plants. The substance usually ends up in landfills, except when recycled into concrete. And that's not the only eco-friendly feature that's going into this kitchen. So the task at hand is to insulate this little attic area, right? Yeah. The attic will house what we call an air handler. It'll work with their water heater and air conditioner to efficiently heat and cool their house. The trouble is, this space can reach up to 140 degrees in the summer. And you don't want this unit fighting that heat to produce cool air. That's not energy efficient. So what we want to do is instead of having the air handler up in that 140 degree heat, we want to condition the roof so that that whole area is cooler and then we can save energy. The plan is to use fiberglass insulation, which is effective and cheap. Okay, if you get up there, I'll hand this to you. Thank you. It takes at least two to lift the insulation up into the ceiling. Let's, let's get a little, little tighter in there, if we can. But only one to staple it in. That would be me. How you doing, Steve? You got it? As long as fiberglass is properly sealed, it won't negatively impact the home's air quality. Sure appreciate the help, guys. Sure. But insulation in the attic can't do it alone. Next stop, the crawl space. So what we're doing here is uh, putting down a vapor barrier. The idea is that as the house warms up in the winter, it will draw moisture out of the crawl space and up into the house. So the vapor barrier laid down on the sand in the crawl space will keep moisture down in the house and uh, keep the air quality a little bit better. So this is one great big hot water heater, 100 gallons. 100 gallons. Super high efficient. Yeah. What's really efficient is using one machine, the water heater, to heat the home's water and air. That eliminates the need for two separate appliances. But how does the air handler work? Well, simple. Hot water travels through coils in the air handler. Air blows across the hot coils and into the house to heat it. The air handler also has a refrigerant coil that works to cool the house in the summer. How much does this weigh? 350. The only way to get this thing into the attic is to lift it. Ready? It's got to go up a ladder and through a small opening. I can't really do it. Okay. Guess who's stuck with that job? Go up. There we go. You got it. Now he's just going to pull it in there. Once the air handler is up and in, we screw some brackets into the ceiling. That is what enables the progress of civilization. Next, we attach straps to the brackets. Oh, we got the boss doing the heavy lifting. And finally, hang the air handler by the straps. There we go. And I think that's it. All righty, we're done. Okay. Ron and Tammy have solved the problem to efficiently heat and cool their home. Now they need to apply those same green ideas to heat their pool. What are people spending to heat their pools in the summer months here? Uh, anywhere from like $400 to $800 a month. A month? Yeah. How much does it cost to run your system? It costs nothing because uh, it runs off the existing pool equipment. Coming up, it's the cleanest and greenest way to heat a pool. So you're just paying for the pump to pump water through the whole system? Yes. And the heat of the sun is free? The heat of the sun is free. Next. Today you're going to put in a, a solar system to heat the pool. Solar pool heating system, yes. How does it work? Um, we tie into the equipment over there. What do you mean? The pool equipment. The beauty of solar pool heating is that you need to filter your pool anyway, so we use the existing pump. Mm -hmm. The water comes from the pool, is pumped, is sucked into the pump here. After the pump, it goes into the filter. Mm -hmm. And then after the filter, we tie in the solar uh, system, which will be tied in right over here. Back in here? Yes. 
So you're going to run a line from here up onto the roof? Yes, we're going to run a line from here, follow the wall along, um, and then there'll be a return line coming back. Great. So next part of the system is up on the roof? Yes, we always pick the, uh, this is a southern roof, which is your best exposure for solar. What are people spending to heat their pools in the summer months here? Uh, anywhere from like $400 to $800 a month. A month? Yeah. How much does it cost to run your system? It costs nothing because uh, it runs off the existing pool equipment. So you're just paying for the pump to pump water through the whole system? Yes. And the heat of the sun is free? The heat of the sun is free. Unfortunately, the cost for materials and installation is not free. That'll run you about 3000 bucks. But if you're already paying for a gas heater, a solar system will save you so much on heating, it'll pay for itself in about a year and a half. And the setup couldn't be easier. So they're tubes. Yes, this is just tubes, tubing right? that, that the water literally flows through. And black material is the best to absorb uh, the sunlight. And that's why all pool collectors you see are black normally. Is this, the, is this what we're looking at Yes, here? this is actually part of the material here we use for our strapping also. So these are just black tubes with yes. kind of fins on them yes. that are joined together. Right. And that's it. The black tubes are made from polypropylene, a recyclable plastic. So the idea of this is like taking a garden hose and stringing it out on your roof. The roof is going to get nice and hot in the summer when you use the pool anyway. Right. So you're taking the pool water, running it through a bunch of garden hoses, and yes. dumping it back into the pool. Yes. Another benefit <laughs> of simple. this on a southern <laughs> roof is that it can take the heat that would be uh, penetrating into the house and literally takes that heat and puts it in the pool. Well, let's put it in. I mean, it couldn't be simpler, right? Yeah. Not only is the system simple, so is the installation. The crew and I glue the tubes to the roof using mastic. After gluing the tubes to the roof, we cut them to the proper length and then attach them to the manifolds, which will evenly distribute the water from the pool. But first, we have to prep the tubes. What we're doing here is spraying silicone on the ends of the uh, tubing, and that makes it easy to slide the manifold barbs on there. Now, this is the tedious part, I take it. Each tube has to be manually inserted into the manifolds, placed at each end of the roof. The manifolds distribute the water from the pool's pump to the tubes and back into the pool. This would be the only time somebody offers to do this for you, so enjoy it. Great. Doing good, Steve. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs> Once the tubes are attached to the manifolds, the crew will connect them to the pool pump. And that's it. Ron and Tammy will be thrilled. So your solar pool heater is almost in. They just have to make the final hookups and get the pump going. That's correct. And you'll be getting hot water for free. That's right. Ron and Tammy had a problem. How to heat the water in their pool, as well as regulate the temperature and air quality of their home. And they wanted to do it all with maximum efficiency. Their solution was to set up a solar pool heater on their roof, seal their crawl space, insulate their attic, and install an energy efficient heating and cooling system in their home. 